All right, good Sunday morning, everyone, and welcome to The Real Story. I'm Matt Karen. You know, police across the country right now are very much under the microscope. And here in Connecticut, certainly no exception uh, from calls to completely defund police departments to calls for police reform and accountability. There's a lot going on, and we have two great guests to talk about it. And we want to bring in our first one right now. He's going to talk about the current state of policing as well with a look toward the future. He is the Hartford Police Chief Chief Jason Thody. Chief, thanks so much for joining us. Always great to talk with you. Me too, Matt. Thanks for, much for having me. Yeah, I want to start uh, with this creation of a civilian crisis response team. Uh, Mayor Bronin wants to do it. This would be a, a class that's trained to respond to issues like mental illness, emotional distress, trauma, and addiction. Uh, he thinks it's going to take some of the pressure off you guys in the police department. What's your opinion of this initiative? I, listen, I think it's a great idea. Um, you know, police are historically uh, the first to have to address problems that, that no one's really sure how to address. Um, you know, years ago when, when problems started to be on the rise in schools, uh, people looked to police and we put school resource officers in the schools. And it didn't take long to realize that that was not a good idea. Um, you know, here in Hartford, we haven't had officers in the schools for years uh, because it really, we as police were not the greatest solution to that problem. Um, I think mental health is another good example of that. When you look at um, officers uh, getting hurt, when you look at individuals uh, getting hurt, when you look at use of force, uh, maybe with the exception of, of domestic violence calls, which also can be very volatile for, for officers. Um, you know, mental health calls uh, cause the most harm, both to the, to the person that's in need, the person in mental health crisis, and to police officers. Um, we are just, yep. uh, we are not uh, equipped uh, to handle those calls as well as um, social workers and, and people like that. And we here in Hartford have partnered with um, Capital Region Mental Health for many years now to have an on-call mental health worker, crisis worker, that can go with us to these calls. Uh, but it's only one person. Um, All right, Chief, I want to... Okay. Right. Yeah. Chief, I just want to jump in, uh, ask you, you know, the last time you and I had sat down was back in February. And I asked you if you believe that incidents of officer misconduct investigations should be handled internally. Uh, and you said, quote, I have no doubt that the Hartford Police Department is capable of doing their own misconduct investigations. I also think that oversight is good. Uh, Chief, anything that you would add or revise to that previous quote, given the current climate that we're in? No, um, I stand by that. Uh, if you look at our track record here, especially in the last couple of years of, of investigating misconduct and, and dealing with disciplinary issues and trying to set a tone and a culture here uh, for accountability, I think we are uh, on the right track. I think we're, we're doing a good job. Um, that being said, uh, you know, we've had a uh, civilian police review board here in Hartford for quite some time. It hasn't always operated um, at, at its peak efficiency, and a lot of people have talked to me about that. But a civilian review board is intentionally outside of the purview of the chief of police and outside of the purview of the Hartford Police Department because it's supposed to be outside oversight. We've had a lot of discussions, especially in the last yeah. couple of weeks, about how we can make that process better. I think that process can be made better. I, I do believe in uh, oversight uh, for a lot of reasons. Um, you know, when you I have been here through uh, probably at least 10 chiefs in 24 years. And some chiefs have uh, have uh, been big on accountability, and some haven't. So, if you can put in a place into place a system that's more consistent because of oversight, I think that would be great. You mentioned the uh, Citizen Police Review Board not, you know, necessarily meeting its mission the way that it was intended to function. Uh, there was a protest of clergy that went from a church in Hartford right to the police department, then to the Capitol. And one of the things that they demanded was that uh, these police citizen review boards should be given the power to subpoena. Do you believe they should? Yeah, I mean, to be effective, I think they need to be able to get the story that they're that they're looking for. Um, you know, I think that. Um, you know, that, that that's a one element to make uh, an oversight system or a, or a review board effective. It's not the only element. The review board, as it sits right now, has the ability to call witnesses and to call officers. Um, and while they can't compel testimony, they do have the ability to bring people in front of that board. 
as long as I have been here, I can't recall one situation where they've asked to do that. Um, so I think that, you know, that, that that is an important piece, but it's also important to, to make sure that you have that you have trained people that are reviewing um, these cases, that you have people where you have credibility on both the citizen side, where, the, where our civilians in the city can look at that board and say, yeah, that's credible when they come to a decision. But you also have to have the buy-in of the officers to look at it and say, yeah, that's a credible, that's a credible board. You know, they're, they're looking at the facts, they're coming to a decision. I think that's the model that we have to come up with. Um, you know, there are other places in the country that sure. do it very well. LAPD has the inspector general model, um, you know, and I think that works well. Uh, but again, those are, uh, you know, those are retired judges. Those are people that 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 worked on, um, uh, you know, on panels, arbiters, and things like that that go in there and, and look at facts. Um, you know, it, our our board has not always been that way. We've gotten decisions back um, with that's no that don't have any real explanation as to how they came to that decision. And if you want buy-in from everybody. Um, it's got to be, uh, you know, a board that's designed to work well and to be fair. Yep, they have to have teeth, they have to be staffed properly, and they have to meet regularly for sure. Chief, uh, let's move along now to uh, the use of deadly force. You know, do you worry at all about the increasing microscope that police departments are under, um, you know, in the sense that it may cause officers to second guess what is a split second decision on when to pull the trigger, especially in an instance where deadly use of force may be very legitimate to save either the officer's life or the life of a citizen? Absolutely. Um, you know, I worry about it on, on a number of on a number of levels because you look at uh, you know the amount of, of scrutiny that officers are under nowadays. It is heightened, and a lot of that, let's face it, came from the George Floyd incident. So uh, that scrutiny deserves to be heightened in that case. Um, but you know, eight minutes and forty six seconds is not a split second decision. Um, so I think that that's a different. Um, you know, that's most certainly a different case. Uh, but uh, you look, at, you know, more recently at the, um, uh, the Rayshard Brooks case, uh, that's a split second decision. Um, and I, I, you do worry that officers may uh, hesitate. And you also worry that officers may make mistakes. Um, and and so, so there's definitely two sides to that argument. Uh, you know, I think the best thing that you can do as an executive, as a law enforcement executive, is, is communicate and, re, and your expectations to, to your to your officers, to your men and women, women that work for you, and be in constant communication with your citizens too. When we have a use of force incident here, um, even if it's remotely questionable, uh, we're making sure we're communicating that with with city council, with clergy members, with our you know with, with the community that we re, that we often have interactions with, so that the word can get out um, that the department is transparent. And if there's an investigation that needs to happen and if there's uh, discipline that, that needs to come out of it, whatever it might be, that, that you have the confidence that, that, that you'll take care of it as a department. Sure. I imagine you're always worried about uh, overcompensation. Thanks, uh, Chief, for that. I want to move along now. The Hartford City Council uh, recently voted to slash a million dollars from your budget. Um, is that going to change the way that you respond or the way that you operate? No, um, you know, I mean, it will change. I mean, that, that that's a million dollars, uh, which is, you know, it equates In to just way? under, you know, four uh, percent of our budget. But we're going to have to look at, you know, where we can where we can take that million dollars. Um, and uh, but I don't I don't anticipate um, that that's going to impact the way that we operate. Um, you know, there's there's going to be some uh, some doing without in certain categories. You know, uh, but. Uh, we're going to get we're going to get past it. The one benefit I have is that I've worked on the budget for this department at least for the last five years or so. Um, so I think we'll be able to navigate that um, in in a way that um, you know the message was sent. Um, you know I don't agree with it, but the message was sent, and and we'll 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 get by it. Why don't you agree with it? I, I don't think that you take any situation where your goal is to improve upon. Uh, the operations of any entity, whether it's law enforcement or anyone else, and remove resources from it. Um, you know, I think the some of the push for for overall defunding of police means that people are looking to abolish it completely. Um, you know, I obviously don't don't agree with that for a lot of reasons. Uh, you know, I think police departments across the country, ours included, do a lot of good work. Um, you know, in in crime reduction, in in making neighborhoods safe and livable, uh, but. 
you know, in this case, it was just it was just the removal of funding. Um, and I don't think that if the expectation is that a, a department works to improve itself and works to, to change for the better, that you reduce funding or you reduce, um, you know, the resources that that department has. I think it's kind of counterintuitive. Yeah. Chief, uh, talk a little bit about some of the community policing initiatives that you guys got going on there in Hartford. What are you doing, not just to enforce the laws, but to build better relationships uh, within the community? Well, one thing, we, I mean, we've always had a good, uh, a good solid uh, foundation for relationship building here in Hartford, uh, probably back uh, to when we really in, in invested in the community policing model and the neighborhood, uh, com neighborhood policing plan and got uh, not just uh, commu a community service officer in every neighborhood, but we gave, uh, we had lieutenants overseeing those officers and we had some real direction and, and some, some uh, real connections where residents had cell phone numbers of middle managers and command staff and we had conversations and we started going to the NRZ meetings on a regular basis and we started doing more outreach um, with the PAL programs and, and you know, recruitment um, I think, you know, we, we established a good base there. Uh, more recently, you know, I've gone to a lot of NRZs, especially when I was the interim chief and, and was, uh, was getting out there and talking to folks. And we've started uh, to really address some of the root problems that people have, have found in the city. We've created an illegal dumping officer because that was, you know, last year, we didn't know how many issues we'd be dealing with this year, but last year that was a big issue. And we were able to give, you know, residents the ability to, to hold people accountable for dumping. Um, you know, homeless outreach officer, uh, domestic dedicated domestic violence team, and having uh, workers in the department uh, that can follow up on these calls. Um, again, kind of like what the mayor was talking about with uh, with uh, the the social workers, uh, having that specific to domestic violence was important here. So, um, walk beats. You know, bringing back the walk beats. Right now, we have 12 officers out there uh, on walk beats on a regular basis. So. Folks are seeing cops not just driving by in their cars in an impersonal way, but out engaging with officers in a very personal way. Um, it, it has been right. challenging to maintain those relationships during COVID-19. Um, you know, as we sit here on a, on a Skype interview where we, we, I think the last time we spoke, it wasn't that way. You were sitting in my office. Um, so it's, it's, it's tough, and I've encouraged officers to maintain those contacts, call on people, check on people, let them know that, you know, that we're still here, um, that, we're, that we still care about them. So it's, it's been a challenge with COVID, but we're still maintaining those ties. And you have uh, minority officers that make up about 40% of the Hartford Police Department, from what I understand. So I just want to move along to this issue, body and dash cameras. When we talk about police accountability and transparency, um, do you believe that that video should be made publicly available even before an investigation may be complete uh, in the interest of transparency? And I know that there's a lot uh, that goes into balancing the pros and cons to that. And how has Hartford benefited from body and dash cameras? I do. You know, you're right. It's a tough balance. Um, you know, you want our old school mentality. You know, I was a detective for a number of years and worked in the bureau for a, a significant period of my career. And it's always this, you know, the sanctity of the investigation. You know, it's it's imperative to maintain the evidence. And, you know, that was our mentality for a long time. And, uh, you know, the, the, the community, when something happens, they want to know what happened. And I think that, you know, my opinion has shifted to say we need to release uh, that you know that video right away. People need to see um, the good, the bad, the ugly. Um, they need to see it. They need to know what happened. That's the idea of transparency. You can't just you know release it when it's when it's to your benefit. And you know we had an officer involved shooting um, two months after I took over as as interim chief. And you know in Connecticut the state's attorney comes in. Uh, in, a, in a deadly officer-involved shooting, and they take over the investigation. So that evidence and that video really falls under them, under their purview. Uh, we don't really have uh, the jurisdiction to release it, but the mayor and I were adamant, and, and we had you know many late-night calls, and we were able to release that video very quickly. Um, and, I, and I think that's what people want. They want to see what's behind the curtain. So I am a proponent of releasing it early, yep. um, and then you kind of figure out how, uh, how that... Uh, how you deal with that if, if a case goes to court later. Chief, thanks so much. Uh, we're going to have to leave it there. I wish we could talk about this all day. There's certainly a lot to get into. Uh, Chief Jason Thody of the Hartford Police Department, we thank you for joining us on The Real Story and coming on and being transparent and answering some tough questions. Always good to talk to you.
Good to talk to you too. Thanks for having me. All right, coming up next on The Real Story, we're going to sit down with State Representative Brandon McGee to talk about police reform and accountability uh, legislation and what that might look like as we head toward a special session of the legislature. Coming up next.